Hey everyone, Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. Tonight we're going to do um, a little fun with some new products that are going to be in the January through June mini catalog. Um, we're, here's our theme <laughs> tonight. Some uh, uh, red plaid flannel um, shirt fun. So I'm um, glad you can join me. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to flip my um, flip my camera around. You'll see my ceiling just for a moment. All right, so I'm going to clip in here. Messy desk alert. Got to slide the phone over a little bit. There we go. I decided to adjust it before I went live. So, hey, Patty. Hey, Carolyn. How are you? So let me get my light a little better here so you can see better and yet keep it out of the camera's way. So this is the card that we're going to make tonight. And um, actually, this is a little something old, a little something new. So we're using some uh, paper that is in the holiday catalog right now. Um, I'm going to have to assume that that will be retiring here um, in December. We won't have the retired list until December 12, uh, December 8th, excuse me. Um, but that would be my guess that this one is going to go away. And, uh, but it was so perfect for this, uh, this shirt card. So this is the paper. It's uh, all sorts of fun um, Christmassy patterns. And you get a lot in the pack, which is nice. Um, here's a couple cards. Now, obviously, this one is the same, actually the same paper as our shirt card. Um, this is one of the, the swing cards. And I also did it in a couple other patterns from the pack. So super fun paper. It's supposed to be a holiday paper, but we're going to make it. I thought this would be a really cute. Well, it's a guy card. This one I made a birthday card, but I think it would also make a really cute um, Valentine card, don't you think? Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. The, the products that are coming. So today's an exciting day for demonstrators because today is the pre-order day for the um, upcoming catalog. Demonstrators get to order a month in advance. And so if you have a long wish list and um, you have a lot of things you want, it's really a great time to get the starter kit. Um, not only are you going to save a bunch of money, you're also going to be able to get uh, some of these new things in your starter kit. So, um, And then you would be a demonstrator and you can um, enjoy a purchase discount then on all of your future purchases. So we've got our dies here and our stamp set. The only thing I used the stamp set for was actually um, on this card was the inside greeting. So um, let's go ahead. Yeah, lumberjack. Exactly my thoughts, Lisa. Like a, a Valentine lumberjack card would be super cute or a birthday card. Um, you know, you could even put a greeting on the front if you wanted, but these dies are so clever how they designed them and they're super fun. Um, you can do all sorts of things with them and they do have, um, they have stitching on them and then they also have some embossing. So the suspender uh, buckles have, um, embossing and then the buttons, if you can see those there have a lot of detail to them as well. So I'm going to walk you through how to make this card, um, before I do that, I'll show you just kind of what the dies look like. This reminds me of like paper dolls. Like seriously, this would be a fun gift for some kids to just put some temporary adhesive on these pieces and they could, um, you know, kind of do some dress up here. So you can see how if you had a wedding or a groom's dinner or something, you could make some really um, fun cards. Like where's our, our, we need our lapels here, don't we? just have like temporary adhesive on this. Um, so can you kind of see how you can build those and put them together to make, um, you know, to create your card? Super fun. Um, and then, you know, and if you didn't want to do the straight tie, of course you could do the bow tie, which is a little more, say, wedding-ish. And use the middle part. So just super fun. You could do the little buttons, whatever. Um, so that is kind of the rundown. You can even do the pocket and it's even got a little um, scarf. Uh, this this piece that is the tie buckle can also be um, a, a, pocket, a scarf coming out of the pocket as well. So 
Um, all right, so let's pull these out, take a closer look at them. Uh, one thing I, one feature I really appreciated about this is that instead of one little button die or even multiple little button dies, they're all on one die. So to me, that's going to be much safer. <laughs> I'm much more li less likely to lose this big die of six buttons than I am of six tiny little button dies. So I really appreciated their thought on that. Um, the collar piece we will pull off here. And then we're going to use this one multiple times. So this one is how I made the suspenders. Hey, Carol Garrison. And also the, um, I don't know what we would call that, the facing or something, whatever that, um, <laughs> that piece down the middle of the shirt is called. That was also that same die. And it's so funny because when you cut it in black, it looks whiter than in the pattern paper, but they're exactly the same piece. And then um, this little piece right here on the suspenders is actually a single piece. I believe it's actually made to be um, an accent for the pocket if you want, but it also works really well with the suspenders. You'd, I'm just going to cut one, and then we're just going to cut that in half to use that. Um, okay, do I have everything? I think I've got all the dies I need off of there. So let's bring in our die cutting machine. So one of the other exciting things for demonstrators today that happened is the um, the new mini embossing machine became available for demonstrators to pre-order. Customers will be able to purchase that um, on January 5th when the uh, mini catalog goes live. So that was exciting, but I'm going to use the big one for this. Of course, I don't have my mini yet. I just ordered it today, though. I'm excited. And let's get some paper. That would be useful. Um, so let's look at the silver. This is our silver foil, and that's what I'm going to use to cut the buckles and then the whatever we call those things. <laughs> I'm sure they have a name, right? Um, I have a piece of our adhesive sheet here. Um, so our newer adhesive sheet is a little bit different than the previous Sizzix uh, adhesive sheets. The newer ones, um, I find them a little easier to work with. Um, they you, you do them in basically in strips. And then you, you peel them off and you put them on, um, you know, however you want. So it's, um, I feel like I'll have less waste this way. Um, and I can get my two buckles there. Um, now I'm actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm actually, um, that's the dies I forgot. The buckles. And there are two of them. For some reason I was thinking there was only one of them. Never mind. I was going to cut those and do them separate, but there are two of them, so I don't need to do that. I am going to cut this, though. And let's see if we can do a buckle. And a buckle. And also this little piece. And the only one that I really care about having the adhesive on is that little one, because it is kind of skinny. Um, so I'm even kind of wasting more. I probably could have cut those down because what happens here is it's probably going to transfer some of the, um, marks from my top plate. Usually when I use foil papers, I try to use a top plate that is not scarred up, you know, is, is pretty clean, but I didn't, didn't uh, bother getting one out tonight. So we'll just make do. Oh, it's not terrible, but yeah, you can see some, some scratches from that top plate sort of transferred over. I still could probably use it though. So there we have that piece that we're going to cut in half for our strap. And let's see, we need our most wonderful tool ever. <laughs> the take your pick tool here. Let's get that out of there. There we go. Super cool how, hey Jean from North Dakota. Super cool how the, uh, it just embosses that um, image in there. And when you use the foil papers, it really takes that embossing. It's very defined, which is cool. All right, so we're done with those. Let's set those aside. Let's grab some more cardstock. I think we can get everything else cut in one go here. So when I made this card, as I said, that paper is six by six, right? So I cut off a four by six piece and I cut this one down to five and a quarter. That left me with this two inch piece. Out of this two inch piece, I can get um, my shirt facing there, that center piece. 
And I can also get my collar. Um, in fact, I could get a couple collars out of this probably, but I only need one. So I'm gonna lay it kind of right there on the edge. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that in just a minute. Oh, wait. Um, okay, I lied. We are going to have to do... Um, we'll have to cut our suspenders separately because they're the same die as that one. However, I do have a little piece of basic black here with some of the, the adhesive sheets on the back. And we might as well cut our buttons while we're at it here. So get that little button die on there. Send this guy through. And then we're going to want two of the long pieces for suspenders. And I've actually already cut one of them, so we only need to cut one more. All right, so there's my shirt facing piece there. Here is the collar. Now this is, um, it's almost two separate pieces. They're just joined by the teeniest little piece. And, and that's on purpose. Um, if, if they do come apart, it's no worries. Um, but by having that little piece, you can, they're flexible. You can make it a wider neck or a skinnier neck, um, depending on your card. Um, or you can just cut them apart and, and use them separately. Here are our little buttons. They got nicely captured right in the piece there because we have that adhesive sheet on the back. And then when I cut that collar, um, this little piece was left over. Um, and I'm going to keep that because that's going to be a guide for me um, because my lumberjack is wearing a t-shirt under his red shirt. So his or her red shirt. All right, so we're going to take this and let's go back to that die that we're going to use this three times on this card. And we'll send that through and then we're ready to put our card together. You know, in the past, I've done some um, origami-type cards that are shirt cards. Have you ever done those? You do them as a money holder or something. They are a little putsy. Um, so I actually found this one to be um, easier uh, than, than doing the origami version. And I think it looks cooler, too. So, so this is what I was talking about, the t-shirt on my card. So I'm going to bring this piece in. And remember, we captured this little... Um, we kept this little scrap um, on the, the back there. I'm just going to put a teensy bit of adhesive on the back. And I'm going to, uh, on the front of it almost, because I want the contrast here. And I'm just putting the oils of my fingers on that and taking some of that sticky away. I can even put it on my buffalo plaid flannel shirt and get it fuzzy. Because I don't want it to, um, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because I'm actually punching it off. But you'll see in a minute here. So we, we're just going to try to center that. That's where my grid paper would be really handy if I'd gotten any out. And then we've got our one and a half inch circle punch. You could use really any punch for this, an oval punch, whatever. And I'm just going to go in there and I'm just going to um, cut out that little piece. And that's where I'm going to add a strip of white behind um, to be a t-shirt. So. Let's bring in all of our pieces here. So we've got our um, inside greeting piece, we've got our little buckles, and our um, metal slider piece, I guess I would call it. Our two suspenders there, our collar and our buttons. And where did I put my t-shirt piece? Well, no worries, I've got another one right over here. I'm sure I'll find it as soon as I replace it, right? So this is going to go right behind here, and that's going to be that um, that t-shirt. Um, to me, that just made it look more, more like a real shirt by having that behind there. Just going to add a little adhesive here. It doesn't have to be a full piece um, because only part of it's going to show, although you certainly could do a whole quarter sheet there. Boy, that new adhesive works good. Okay, be easier if I flipped it over, wouldn't it? All right, so there we have our t-shirt underneath. And then that's where that collar is going to come in. But before you put that collar on, we want to add our um, 
are facing on the shirt. Now you can see my um, circle was a little bit deeper than the collar. Doesn't matter because we can cover it up with this piece. Does that make sense? So then when we bring in that collar, that's going to look just like the, the shirt. So uh, before you stick this one on, it's sometimes useful to um, just kind of test it out and see um, how it fits in with the collar. So that collar is going to go on top right there. And that one, I can't remember. Did, oh, I did. I used mini dimensionals figures. I didn't think I could get away with doing an entire card with no dimensionals, right? <laughs> that is so not how I roll. All right. So again, to recap, these dies are called the suit and tie dies, and they're bundled with the handsomely suited stamp set. They'll be available for customers to order on uh, January 5th. Or if you are a demonstrator, you can pre-order them now. Or if you um, decide to purchase the demonstrator starter kit, which is $125 in product of your choice for $99, you could make this be one of the products of your choice or any of the other mini catalog things. Now you can see when I put that on, that extends um, uh, beyond. Uh, I suppose you could cut your paper first, so you're not cutting an extra, but I find it easier just to do extra and then trim it off since I wasn't sure how um, how long I needed the top part. So we're, we're doing good here. We're, should we add some buttons to our shirt? I guess that would be a next step, wouldn't it? I'm going to sit down for this part. <laughs> my back is talking to me. So I'm going to pop these um, backing pieces off of the buttons and just use this. Um, I'm not actually going to stick them down fully yet. I'm going to just lay it, sort of lay them on here so that I can position them around if I, to the final location. Those first ones did really well. Oh, don't you stick on me yet. Got to get all six on there before I can figure out my spacing. Ideally, if you can get the backing off here while they're still kind of all together, it's a little bit easier than chasing around the buttons, but whatever. You could still do it. Come on. I know you want to come off. And of course you wouldn't have to use this adhesive backing if you rather just put a dot of liquid glue on there and go. You totally could do that. One more sticky button. All right, I know I don't have them very well spaced, but that's why we didn't stick them down, right? Now we can slide them into place. All right, guys, how does that look? Does that look pretty even? This one looks over just a hair, doesn't it? All right, and they can just press those down. And then we're ready to add our suspenders. Now, again, these are going to be longer than the card. No, um, if you cut the full piece, for this one, I actually cut the black cardstock to five and a quarter. So these I don't have to trim. They're already exactly how they need to be. Um, when I did my card, it appears I just peeked, as you can see. Um, I did pop these up on mini dimensionals. You could also put them flat if you prefer. Up to you. I, I kind of like that shading or dimension that you get when they're popped up. Um, but again, it's your personal preference. For me, whenever um, it's optional, dimensional or no dimensional, I pretty much always go dimensional, don't I? <laughs> hey, Donna. 
Oh, does your back talk to you every day, Jean? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I was take, taking up jogging again, and my body is like, what are you doing to us? <laughs> it's not happy. Dogs are loving it, though. All right, let's peel off those backings. We'll get our suspenders on, and then we'll add our buckles. So fun. It's kind of like grown-up paper dolls, right? <laughs> really fun to play with. Um, you can create all sorts of things with these. Like there's some really fun paper that comes with this that um, looks like men's shirts. Um, very realistic. So lots of ways you could go. I think you could also, if you didn't have this paper, you could use the, um, I think the Buffalo plaid stamp set would work. Um, for even more of a buffalo plaid look. And then you also could do, um, these are the um, best plaid builder dies. You could do those and um, and play with that. So, oh, Nancy, you guys have that set? Yeah. It's so fun. Okay, so let's grab this. Oh, look at my dimensional mess. Oh my goodness. All right, so here's that little piece that we did. Again, it's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be the trim for the pocket if you wanted to do a two-tone, uh, but it also makes the, the suspender sort of slighter. And I'm just going to eyeball that and cut that in half. And I do have the adhesive on the back of this, which is going to be really handy. If you don't do the adhesive on this, again, you could use your liquid glue or you could use a rolled up glue dot. That pressed down. Get the backer off of here. And speaking of glue dots, we will bring in our glue dots here to put our buckles on. Oh, you know what? I don't need a glue dot, do I? You're all going, Susan, you put them on the adhesive sheets. I completely forgot. See, it's big enough. You really wouldn't have to, but gosh, how convenient was that? So to peel and stick. Love it. Oh, goodness. I do want to get it down a little bit farther. Did I pre-order today? Uh, I did pre-order today. And my box will be here tomorrow. All right, there is the buckles. Super fun. And we're just gonna stick that onto our card. So this um, paper, I actually, I believe I told you wrong. I told you I cut it at four. I actually cut it at four and a quarter, which meant that leftover piece was one and three quarters, which was plenty big enough to cut my collar and that um, shirt facing out of. So we're gonna go to our adhesive here. Get that stuck down. Lots of adhesive, I don't want it to go anywhere. And then I purposely made this five and a quarter so that I would leave a little bit of the black cardstock above and below the card. You could also put it all the way to the top and that could be more pant like the pants. Um, I did center it on both cards. I think it doesn't matter. You could do either way. And let's just do our inside stamping and we'll stick this in and we're done. So again, I'm making this a birthday card. You could do something fun on the inside too. You could, uh, with your leftover piece here, you could actually cut out the little um, pockets and you could have that on the inside or uh, the bow tie or something. You could do something fun along those lines. I don't, I don't think lumberjacks wear bow ties though, do they? Probably not. <laughs> but they could have pockets. That I would totally believe. And then we're going to put our inside piece in here. And there is our card. Yay! Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Got my tea here and my matching <laughs> mug. 
Um, but I can... Can't you see how these Best at Buy dies? I mean, that was really these uh, Best Plaid Builder dies. That really pops too. So um, you could get a, a fun look with that as well. I'm going to flip the camera around so I can say goodbye. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. I hope you have a great rest of your evening and we'll see you next time. By the way, I do have um, this uh, card is up on my blog. You can check out that blog post at suestampfield.com. And um, I have the number for the dies listed right now. There's no link because you can't order them yet unless you're a demonstrator. So that will be coming in January. But I'll also add this video to the post. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care and have a great night. Bye-bye.